Hello, everyone, and welcome in. Is we're going to meet with the head coach of the EKU Colonel football program, Walt Wells, here in a moment as we take a look back at an exciting signing day for 2021. EKU football has signed a, a great uh, plethora of uh, new talent to come in for their first season in the ASUN Conference today, the one day out of the year that the fax machine is still an important tool uh, across America. And with that being said, let's bring in the head coach of the Colonels, Walt Wells. And coach, congratulations on, on such a great day today for you and the staff under uh, different circumstances than <laughs> usual. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, it, it's been a culmination of a great month of, of signings and transfers. And uh, just tell us a little bit about your, your thoughts on the day and the overall excitement. Well, you know, recruiting is ever changing, as we all know. And uh, for first and foremost, it, it, it's a credit to you know Eric Losey, who is our recruiting coordinator, Kelly Mesker, who is an assistant. Um, in our graphics department and she does a lot of different things. She's actually was hired to be an on-campus recruiting coordinator uh, and, and really give uh, visits, but you know, those have been canceled ever since she was hired, but she's adapted and overcame and done some good things. Uh, John Barnett does a great job in helping us with our roster management. Tom Schultz does a great job in, in our presentations and in our, our virtual trips that we have, our visits that we have and, and making sure everything's set up as much as it can be like an official visit. And, and then all our QCs and coaches have done a great job of, of just working. And, and it's like I told them after we had a staff meeting afterwards. And um, I told them, I said, recruiting nowadays, it's always ongoing. It's always been something that you always have to do. But more so now, it's ongoing for the class you're bringing in. It never stops. And uh, because of the different things that they've, uh, you know, allowed to happen with the NCAA, with the transfer portal, and uh, and the availability of so many different type of players out there. So uh, we're always learning, but we feel great about the young men, and we're thankful for the young men and, and their families that are coming in uh, to be new colonels. Um, you know, we had a good class in the in December in the first early signing period. Uh, we had a I call it a beginning of school signing period when uh, when uh, transfers come in and, and are available, and we had one high school guy come in. Uh, and they're available and they start class. So then we can announce them. And then obviously with the last signing period here today with uh, some high school players that we finished up on. So we're really excited about it. Three really unique sets of, of individuals we'll talk about in a moment. But when you look at what needs you had in this class, tell us a little bit about the great job your staff went out uh, doing and filling some of those needs. Well, I think when we lost, you know, when we sit down and as the season went on, we, we always have recruiting meetings. And as, as we see the, the, the culture of how things were changing with our opt outs, with our, you know, in, guys that didn't opt into the, the free year that they want, that they were potentially could have uh, and just the different things that were available. And some guys that were grad transfers or live in our place as a grad transfer. We had some maturity issues we needed to meet. So that's where we went to the transfer portal. We had, but I always want to make sure that we build our program with good, firm high school players because they're the basis of any program. And so uh, I wanted to make sure that we got the best that we could get at the positions that we needed to, as we look at our, our roster, manage it and decide, all right, we need younger kids here, maybe one older, or maybe we need two older kids here and, and one younger. And just how the, the classes of the kids that we have here where we think they are as players, where we think they can be as players. Uh, and I think, you know, the honesty and, and the true evaluation that goes into that from our staff uh, is something that's very important. And, you know, when it comes down to it, the players are the ones that are going to win the games for us. And we got to make sure we're getting the right type of young man. And I think that they did a heck of a job. I'm, I'm very happy with them, very proud of, of their diligent work. You know, they didn't have to spend a night away from home. That's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, we missed it a little bit, to be honest with you. 2020 and 2021 have provided such a different landscape for recruiting. Right. A, a large number of the young men that are signing uh, today and over the last month were not able to come to campus uh, and see campus. They were not able to meet with you face to face or meet with anybody on the staff face to face. Uh, how, how did that alter this process a lot? And, and how important were those relationships throughout that process in, in, in forming a, a bond with these young men to, to really uh, commit the next year or multiple years to EKU and this football program? Well, I think as you watch recruiting throughout the country today and, and in December, the kids were coming to places that they knew and, and were familiar with, the people. And uh, and really that's what it should always be about. But sometimes you get caught up in, 
in the, the big stadiums or the, the nice nutrition centers or whatever, you know, whatever you like. Um, and, and in the relationship part of it doesn't have as strong a hold sometimes as it does. Well, when you can't meet somebody, when you can't look somebody in the eye, it comes down to, all right, maybe people they trust back home, the coaches, um, the 707 coaches or whoever you're t- dealing with having a strong influence on them and their, their significant champion is what we call it. You know, whether it's their parents, uh, it could be a grandmother, it could be an uncle, it could be a coach, whoever their champion is. We want to make sure that, you know, they wanted to make sure that, Hey, I'm sending my son to somebody that's going to take care of him. First and foremost, wanting to be a great football player, wanting to get an education, but I want to know, you know, in today's world with everything that's going on, COVID, uh, social injustice, everything that's going on in today's world, I want to be able to go talk to that young man or that coach or in those coaches and know and feel confident because I haven't had them sit in my house. I haven't had the opportunity to sit in his office. I hadn't had the office, the opportunity to spend a whole weekend with him and get to know him. And so I think it takes a lot of trust. And I think the relationships that our coaches had built up, I, obviously I have, you know, a lot of relationships throughout the South and different things that we have built up. Um, really helped us in, in landing some of these guys. And as you look through it, we've, we've got some guys that have won some championships and that was important to us. We want a mentality here of winning championships. Uh, but, you know, it also doesn't stray us away from a kid that's on a bad team that's a really good player. That, that means you got to learn to fight through a lot of things too. So um, I think, you know, as you go through it, I think that's around the country you're seeing that. You're seeing surprises. Oh, guys, the late gets and the late flips – are less this year probably than they are in other years because of COVID. When we're putting our program up against others right now, what, what are the things that people get most excited about uh, EKU football right now? Well, I think the most thing is, you know, you know, one of the things was we played last fall. And I think they really realized that we were, in, you know, football is important here. All right. No more than any other sport. I, I've always said that. But football is – important here and they know that and I think that reestablished that when we went out and played nine games to make sure that we got our season in and that we did it in a way that took care of all our players took care of all our staff everybody was healthy uh, and so I think they understood that I think the other thing is they see a an, a an administration that's wanting to move things along and that's wanting to get us to where we need to be in a, in a competitive edge you know I've got a fairly young staff and it's a diverse staff and I think that they enjoyed the company of those guys as, as they talk to them. And I think they also know that they can learn and become good football players. And then we had a year to put a production on the field and they saw, we didn't back down from anybody. I mean, they, they understood our challenging schedule and they saw where we, you know, beat a team, you know, a ranked team for the first time in I don't know how many years. And we beat a non-conference opponent for the first time in I don't know how many years. And, and that those things happened and that we were close, you know, and we should have beat, you know, an FBS program and, 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 you know, it's things that we got to get better at and we got to win those games, but it's something that they say, all right, I want to be a part of that. And and I think that's mainly what they saw. No question. The benefit of having a true spring practice and summer workouts will pay uh, dividends this fall in 2021 as EKU no the A-Sun conference. Let's take a look at the guys who, who make up this initial class in the A-Sun conference. We'll start uh, taking a look at, at, at these transfer players. And, and, Coach, if you don't just mind going down the list and telling us what, what you see out of some of these guys and how they'll help us here at EKU. Well, you know, we lost we lost a couple of DBs to uh, the graduation transfers. And, uh, you know, Roy Baker is, is the same thing at Buffalo. He spent five years at Buffalo. Uh, he He's granted the sixth year, which is awesome. Started seven or eight games there at Buffalo this year. He started many games throughout his career. He's a long – uh, corner, you know, obviously uh, coming from Miami down there and played in great competition in high school and played in, you know, very successful program in Buffalo. So we're excited about his length, his experience, and, and he's a competitor. He played on, on multiple special teams, and I think that's a great advantage for us. He's come in, and he's been here, I guess this is week three now, and, uh, you know, he's he's not a big rah-rah kid. You know, he's in here learning the lay of the land. Uh, but you can notice who he is when he walks through the door. He is a good-looking young man, and we're anxious to get him. But I think he can help us in the secondary. We're, we play a lot of match coverage. And basically, you know, the easiest way to explain match coverage is it's it's zone coverage for uh, 10 yards, and then it becomes man coverage after 10. Now, you don't know who the man's going to be, but, um, you know, it's it's a very popular coverage. It's played throughout the country, especially in the SEC. And, uh, 
And so we are we we installed it last year for the first time here, and uh, our guys got better and better as we moved along. And we think this young man can come in and and challenge the ball in the air and make contested catches for our for the receivers that we go against. Uh, John Blunt's a, uh, another young man that uh, Coach Franklin, Chris Franklin, uh, had uh, uh, recruited and helped bring to uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, he's he, he was in a JUCO. He's a JUCO All American down in. Um, I think it was Cisco was where he was at. I can't remember right off the top of my head uh, before he went to Western. He went to Western, uh, and things just didn't work out for him. Had some injuries early on, nothing major. Uh, you know and the, you know how it gets. Sometimes you get behind and you just can't, you know, you don't get out of it. Decided to go into the portal. Uh, we knew about him. We knew a lot about him. And the great thing is, is, you know, you can see he's originally from Virginia, but he's also got a lot of great ties in Texas. But his father's moved to Lexington. So now he's, you know, I think that helps us out with regional. Uh, you get a chance to see him play, and uh, he's got length and speed, and uh, and I think he's uh, going to come in and do some good stuff for us at that corner position. Both those guys are going to be corners, uh, and, and we'll, we'll compete for the starting jobs with Davion Ross and some other guys out there, Josh Hayes and, and uh, many other guys out there. But uh, we needed some depth at that position. We need some experience. Then you go into wideout. We, we lost uh, Keon, and we lost uh, Jackson Beerman. So when we lose those two guys who were very productive for us last year, you know, and I look at our roster, you know, we got Jacquez coming back. We got Wilcox coming back. And, and so I started looking at the other guys coming back and they're all freshmen. And so I said, guys, we need to get some experience. You know, we need to get some guys that's been in college. I don't care, you know, if they, if we see them playing and they fit what we need them to fit and what we're looking for, that's what we want. And so if you, Mo, Mo comes from a, a great pro, actually comes from the same program as Gregory Green. Um, you know, a state championship type program where Tua Tagovailoa or whatever his name is played, and all these great players down in Alabama, and they're they're a great high school program. And uh, you know, we've got film on uh, Mo and was watching it, and he decided to hit the portal uh, when they had the coaching change. And uh, you know, quite frankly, he stuck with us. I and mean, we had some people come after him at the end. Uh, he saw what Keon did and uh, and Jackson, and and felt like he fit the mold. You can see he's a taller receiver. Uh, and I think he runs well for us. And so uh, he's somebody that we're excited about getting him here. Uh, had dinner with him last night. He's a good young man. He's looking for some deer venison. So if anybody's got any deer venison, you know, I mean, to buy, to buy. He, uh, he's looking for some deer. He loves deer meat. And um, then Kiki, uh, Kiki's from Pahokee. And I got some good ties down in Pahokee from recruiting down there years ago. And, um, you know, he, he was at uh, – Kent State, and he's a bigger – he reminds me of Jackson a little more. He's a bigger post-dig type runner, a uh, big target. I mean, he's a big young man. And, uh, you know, we feel like he's a matchup problem, you know, over the middle and, and down the field um, with his with his body size, you know. And, and so we're excited about what he brings and what he brings into the room. You know, my philosophy, I've always been an offensive line coach and been a coordinator and all that. But, I mean, I've always worked with the O-lines. And, you know, my, my belief is you win it up front. You know, you got to have solid O-line, D-line. I'm never going to turn down a really good player at O-line or D-line or somebody that we think can be a good player. Never going to do it. Um, you know, we're going to build those because those guys get injured often. A lot of things happen. Uh, development sometimes slower, especially with the high school kids. And so TK is somebody that Coach Hawkins – um, had uh, recruited to LSU. And so he had a great relationship with him. Uh, he, he's down in, in South Georgia, um, you know, in prayers to him right now. He's, he's uh, somebody really near and dear to him has passed away. And so, you know, if everybody will say a little prayer for TK, he's on a flight right now down there for the funeral. But uh, he is a big human being, um, an athletic human being. He went to LSU originally as a tight end and they moved him to defensive end. And, uh, you know, and, Quite frankly, you know, there's a lot of players at LSU on that D line, and and we wanted him uh, to to get, you know, he wants to get on the field and get more reps. Basically, is what it came down to. And his relationship and his trust, what you go back to, you don't get to go see anything, you don't get to, so you're going to trust who you believe in. And he trusted Coach Hawkins, and and here we are. So uh, we're very fortunate to have him and, and the rest of these young men. They're all good young men. Uh, character checked out. Football IQ checked checked out. And, and they'll get a chance to get on the practice field this spring uh, with you. And go That's right. The, they'll get. We'll start spring ball. I think it's uh, March thirty. Don't hold me to that. March thirtieth. 
uh, is the first day. And uh, I was looking at my calendar and, uh, you know, that all can change because of COVID and some things like that. And we talked the other night. We, I'd love for everybody to be able to come, but I can't tell you that you can or cannot come because of COVID restrictions. So right now you cannot come because of COVID restrictions. If it opens up, we'll put out an edit from EKU football Twitter site and everywhere else and let you know. But uh, yeah, they, they're going to get a chance. That's, that's what really appealed to me. These guys wanted to be here. We got them in school. We got them here. They made those decisions and, and, you know, they're going to be going through spring ball and competing. And so now when fall comes around training camp, it's old hat. Now they're playing ball. It, it, let's take a look at some of these uh, incoming guys that decided to sign in December with this program. Obviously, within the last few years, December 15th has become a, a second signing day. Uh, and it starts off with a pair of quarterbacks up top, Coach. Oh, well, no question. And both and Elias is here right now. That's what's really good about Elias. And 210 is probably pushing it. I mean, he's gotten here and gotten in Case Cafeteria, and I think he's already at 220. But uh, he is a – very, very intelligent young man, and I say that off in the classroom. He's like a four point oh and a three point and a high high ACT. I mean, the, the, his parents and you know are are very well educated, and and they you know I mean I think doctorate level of educations, and they expect high level of education for him. Uh, they were very pleased with what we're doing, and uh, and then. He, he's a he's a he's a good athlete. He's a good football player. And and some of the brief meetings we've had with him already, you can tell he can pick the stuff up quick. And so we're really pleased with him. And then DJ Boney was was a, is a guy that is an athletic guy that, you know, is out of Evans High School. And uh, he, I think he originally went to IMG. And so I knew Kevin Wright. I knew some people there in Orlando. And of course, Trent Trent recru recruited both these guys and did an outstanding job. And uh you know, DJ will be here in, in the summer, and and he'll obviously get a chance to come in and compete and and you know work to get that get in the rotation there with uh, Elias and then uh, of course Parker. Um, Kevin Butler is a DB out of Orlando, um, small in stature, um, but don't let the but don't let the uh, stature fool you. He he brings a punch when he comes off film. A um, lot of guys that coaches high school coaches are you know are really a, our, our lifeline now with the information. It kind of goes back to when I first started recruiting and film wasn't available by huddle and you didn't have Twitter and you didn't have all this stuff we have now to, to interact with people. You just went by the word of, of high school coaches. And everybody in that area couldn't keep talking about, couldn't quit talking about Kevin. And Shannon Morrison, who's now um, gone away from us and uh, over to his alma mater in Marshall, uh, Shannon did a great job of recruiting him at that time and, and uh, made it made a great connection with the young man. And we're happy to have him. Uh, we're hoping he can be that uh, headhunter type guy and ball hunter type guy at safety and play with a chip on the shoulder. OB is somebody that, you know, Blackman is where my brother used to be the head coach, quite frankly. I mean, that was years ago, but uh, his mother and my brother worked together. So we had an instant connection there. And then Coach Losey did a heck of a job of identifying him first. Because they had three offensive linemen sign FCS for better, and so he, uh, you know, he did a great job of identifying OB, and we actually got OB here uh, before they shut everything down for a junior day. So we met him, we saw him. He was underweight, uh, and we got him to, you know, he bought into what we told him, you know, and he bought into it. And he had several, several offers. He stuck with us all the way through, and has a great relationship with Coach Losey, and uh, they did a great job there. Uh, McAllister here is, uh, he, he, he's a, he's from up in Akron. He did not go to all the schools that everybody went to that we have from Akron up there in Ho, Ho, I think it's Hoban or Hoboken or whatever that Fitzgerald and all them went to. I gotta learn it better, but, uh, I'm learning Ohio and, uh, he is a, he's a good back. He's a tough in between the tackles back. Um, he, he can come out of the backfield and he has nice hands. He can run the screens. He, uh, he can do a lot of different things for us. Uh, he lines up in the slot and catches the football, tough runner. Uh, we're excited about having him. Another young man that, that committed to us way early and then signed with us in December. Harold's a big project on the outside linebacker, and we just kept watching him. The one thing you'll notice about Harold is he can run. I mean, and he's a good young man, and he can run, and he's got length. And so uh, we felt like, you know, for our jack position, which is our boundary end in our 3-4 defense, that he's a guy that we had to, we identified, and Coach Stillman did a great job, and we got him in the fold. And then Braden Slona, you know, and and this is no slight to McAllister because, um, you know, they're all equal coming in. 
Uh, I just know Braden, somebody that that last year at the state championships or two years ago, whenever it was, uh, you know, the coach came up to me and was wearing me out about him. And uh, so we got him here on the junior day, saw him. Uh, I think he's a hidden gem in the state. You know, I know a good buddy of mine over at Louisville was like, yeah, I wanted to take him. We couldn't get the rest of the guys to take him. I said, well, that doesn't mean you were getting him. But uh, him, we're going to fight you all the way tooth and nail. I mean, we ain't backing down from nobody. But, uh, but you know, we – he he came and and he felt like he was that caliber of player. I did too, and I'm I'm thankful we got him. And I think he's a tough, good runner. Um, he's he breaks away. Um, I don't know how breakaway he is, but he's a chain mover, is what he is, and he is a tough son of a gun. So we're excited about him, Coach. I can't help but notice looking down that uh, list of, of seven young men that are joining the program. The six of them come from the new a sun footprint and you take a look at the map here uh coach it, it's a, a new era of eku football and an exciting transition as we create one of the top fcs conferences in the country just tell me a little bit about what you're hearing from recruits right now and how excited they are about this move for eku well you know obviously the guys we signed are from that area are fired up that you know we got a footprint coming south and coming more south than we have been, you know, other than Jacksonville. And so I know they're excited about that. Obviously, recruits are reaching out uh, for 2022. Some of them are still 21s are still reaching out, and we still have slots left. But uh, it, the A Sun is going to is going to be a premier football league. And you know, with the addition of the other teams that we're, uh, I'm sure they're all in nego. I'm not in negotiation with them, but they are. And, uh, you know, the, the ones that we currently have, I mean, you look at it, you know, us, Jacksonville State, well, I mean, what a, what a, you know, premier program in the OVC, just like EKU. I mean, Central Arkansas, you know, they've done great here recently. And, and you know, we had a, two great battles with them uh, this fall. So you, we know what they are. We know what they're about. And they're a daggone good football team. You know, then you got uh, North Alabama, who's won Division II national championships for years and been in the playoffs for years and moving up in the state of Alabama, where you know how important football is, right? And so, and then, and then you know, the rest of the league is, is going to be great. And uh, Kennesaw State, I mean, holy cow, sitting right there in, uh, in Atlanta with the pick of the litter and they're running the triple option and they run it as good as anybody in the country, you know, so we got to get ready for that every year. I'm glad we played Citadel last year and get the, got a piece of it. Now they got to play them every year. Uh, the difference between them and Citadel is they don't have to go March. They don't have to do it. They're just students like they are here at EKU. So they're getting some really good talent there out of the city of Atlanta and all around. And so it helps us go into Atlanta and, and bring some players here like we did with, uh, with our, our players that we signed or, or the kids, you know, we signed from, uh, from Grayson today, um, Jaden. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to be in those areas, but the ASUN is, you know, a lot of people are saying it's going to be the SEC of football, you know, and FCS and all that. And I get all that, I, you know, it, it reminds me of how tough it was when I was at Western Kentucky and we were in the Gateway Football Conference, which is Missouri Valley now. And so the Missouri Valley still is probably was, you know, as we build this thing, we're going to be the top. But, you know, currently with South North Dakota State, South Dakota, you know, the list goes on. I mean, they're a good football conference. Well, you better bring your you better bring your your chin strap every game, you know, because that's how it's going to be. And you know, it's funny. Coach Kidd sent me a tech, that text when that happened, and he he's like, "You better bring your chin strap." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I, I get it, Coach. I get it." And uh, but he was happy for us. He was very proud of us. Um, very thankful for his, our relationship and his text. Um, along with Coach Blankenship, gave me a call, and they're so excited about it. So I think the excitement not only from our recruits and everybody, you know, our fans, from our alumni, for, from the people, you know, former coaches, which, you know, I mean, with Coach Kidd, there was a, there's a lineage of coaches that were here forever and ever and ever, you know, and, and so, and then with, you know, Dean and Danny and, and even, you know, Mark brought in a whole new crew, but they're, they're good people. They're all colonels. All right. So, you know, we got to make sure that everybody's excited about this move and understand that it's a, it's a positive move, not only for the football program, you know, it's for the whole university because we've got more juice out of that in this one week than we probably would anytime. And we'll continue to get that juice and we got to help create that juice. Exciting time for sure. And there's four more young men we want to speak on before we part ways here. Uh, let's go through each of them individually real quick. Uh, 
Sure. Uh, Greg Green. Uh, Greg is, I mean, you can see he's from Thompson. Him and Mo, like I said, him and Mo, uh, Greg was probably either a freshman or sophomore when Mo was a senior. You know, just such a great program and playing in such a tough league down there. I mean, he knows what, you know, he's played against SEC players every week. He's played against, you know, F, F, P5 or G5 and FCS level kids every week. So he knows what competition is. He ain't scared of it. And he knows what winning is all about. He got great size, great length, and he won the best dressed award today. I mean, he was decked out, ready to go. He was going to his high school to do a program, and we, uh, I guess it was Zoom, was what we did. And uh, he was he was rocking and rolling and ready to go. And he he's a good player. He, he's got uh, edge rush ability, but he's also can stand up in the run. And we're excited about bringing him in and and letting that championship mentality keep breeding. I mean, because you know in the Kevin Butler was a was a state champion, so you know we we've, we've got guys that were involved in in games like that, and uh, we're excited about that. Jaden, big big receiver. Again, when when we go, you know, in our offense with Coach Richmond, you know, we we like the big ones and we like the slot, you know, the smaller slot guys. Everybody can play everything, but we want to put them anywhere to get them to run the routes that they're best at. And this young man, you know, uh, uh, Jake brought him up here just in the last four to six weeks, and we just follow him, follow him. He had offers. He had places that were begging him to come, but he wanted to come here, and that was important to me. You know, I want guys, especially coming from Miami, that want to be and that are good with being at EKU, and, and he was. And then I saw him slam dunk a basketball, and I was like, man, let's get this dude here and because uh, he's got some explosions. So, obviously, he's not going to slam dunk on the field, but that just tells you what kind of explosion he's got, and we're excited about him. Um, Justin Jones – is uh, is a big long young man, another young man that had some offers and people pressing him to make a decision. Uh, we made a decision on him late, took him, and uh, and he had he committed on the spot, and uh, because he had he had researched it, Coach Losey had done a fabulous job of showing him everything and staying on top of him. Uh, we're looking forward to his development. I think you know he's about eighty two inches long, so we're we're really excited about that. And then Jaden. Little, I mean, he ain't little, but I mean, five ten. Everybody thinks that's little compared to six four and six five and all that. But Jaden's a—he's a daggone football player, man, and he comes from a great program in Grayson. To be able to get a young man from Grayson, you're getting the mentality of, "Hey, we got to win," and winning's important. And he's played on national TV already. You know, he's done it all. And so I don't think he—I think he's got that pit bull type mentality that he ain't gonna back down from nothing. He can run, he can catch. He's—he—he he, he runs his routes. He's already a good route runner, uh, and I think he can make the contested catch. So we're excited about him. Great list of schools there uh, that were on him throughout the process as well. I know we're so excited about all these young men who are joining us here on the EKU campus in the near future, Coach. But before we step away, though, uh, I just want to touch base on our Matter of Pride Booster Group and, and the great things they are doing. Coach, tell us a little bit about some of the facility upgrades we've seen in the last little bit and are finalizing right now for this team. Well, we just, uh, you know, and I think we sent that out on the, I know we sent it out on the email, um, you know, the the wrapping we did in our team room just to provide, you know, it's all about, you know, the experience when kids come on campus for the virtual tours now. And so we, we updated that and that was much needed and that's great. Um, we just put in brand new. We took over two gyms in the Begley, Begley building, which is the football stadium, and they're indoor. We don't have an indoor facility, so we made one. And uh, it's a basket, full length basketball court, full width, all that. And we went turf, wall to wall turf in there. We just put it in there. And uh, we got lines painted. They're putting up the pop up machines in there. And, and so, you know, it's, it's a, and then we're going to put our sleds in there. And our guys are going to be working individually in there. We're putting a code on there or a, a swipe thing so they can get in and out. You know, it's certain that we're not going to let them be in there by themselves, but they can get in and out and, and do a lot of work. And this is the time of year that coaches can take them in there and do some stuff with them. So that's so important. And then we're finishing on the very next gym. We're putting down wall-to-wall matting, you know, like cheerleading matting. So we can go in there in our – our off-season program, which I call the four-quarter program. We can go in there and we can do some down agility stuff. We can do some some competition-type stuff. And then we can also put the wide receivers and other people in there on the jugs machine and let them catch daily so that they can do all the things they got to do to train. You know, and I had a meeting today. I said, guys, there's no excuse when we start uh, spring practice for your position not to be prepared and ready to go. And we got meeting time. 
and we got individual time with them. That's our job is to develop these men to be ready to go because Billy, you know, Coach Brown's got him in the weight room and, and what a great job he does and what a great job John Mike does, you know, so a lot of people know he's been around here for a long time. John Mike runs our nutrition center and it is one of the better ones, not only in FCS, but in G5. And those kids got shakes, they got food, they've got things that they need that they can continue to put the weight on. And that's where that money comes to. And it's huge. It helped us with moving to, uh, to the pre back to Presnell to practice. I mean, and we're continuing to upgrade that. Um, and it's just, those dollars are, are well represented. I think obviously, uh, in our program. And, and my job is to put it back into the training of the young men. You know, uh, I don't believe it's my job to, to, to use that money for facilities and stuff like that. I think it's those people that donate to that love for it to go to the use for the young men. And, you know, it's a player driven program here. We've got to make sure that we understand that these guys, you know, times are changing. We have to continue to push uh, to train these kids because kids don't go out and play backyard football anymore. <laughs> they don't. And so we got to teach them how to play the game. Coach, there, there's one question in the queue here that we'll, we'll, we'll take a second to answer, but uh, obviously we can't talk about any specifics of anyone who hasn't signed yet, but are we expecting any more names today? And, and what does the, the next few weeks look like finishing out this class? Well, we've got, uh, we've got the potential to add anywhere from five to nine more guys. All right. And um, some of those are going to come as late high school guys. I can't sit here and tell you who right now. And some are going to come in the form of transfer portal guys, which we won't announce until they've attended a class. <laughs> and so, because uh, you never know. I mean, it, it is what it is with those guys. But we we do have the potential to sign more. I, I just did a lot of research talking to a lot of different people uh, and getting their ideas. And I had my own ideas. And I just felt like that we needed to keep some back. Uh, you never know what injuries potentially could happen. You never know what, you know, transfer portal for our end. And I'm not, you know, I'm hoping nobody does, but I'm not, you know, I'd be stupid to think that nobody will. And so I got to make sure that we've got the situation to take care of our football team so that when we come into June and we're practicing and going to summer school and all that good stuff, that we've got 63 to 85 guys that are on scholarship that can go win a championship for us. And that's what we got to do. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Uh, exciting times, and congratulations to your staff on such a great recruiting class today. Uh, thanks for all you do, Robert. These, these sessions have been great. I know you've come in and, and done a great job with all that. Uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, anything we can do to help with anything, Manor Pride Boosters, Warren Cleat Club, you know, anything we need to do, you let us know. Uh, we're excited to help, and we appreciate everybody. Thanks, Coach. Everybody, thanks for joining us today. We'll uh, see you in the near future again.